Oh my gosh. In this Bondi Vet Halloween special... Who, who's going to be brave? Come on. It's time to trick or treat. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, but who will you meet? I've got this bump, really. It's quite scary, actually. Will it be a dangerous, terrifying animal? He's going to rear up, put his fangs up, droplets of venom on the end, ready to bite. Or will you meet a friendly sweetheart instead? All she wants to do is just say hello. There's only one way to find out. I've got the heebie-jeebies. Now, the call I'm about to make, it's not so much an animal in danger, it could be more the family. Chris has just received an SOS from a mother in northwestern Sydney. Hello, how Hello. are you? I'm so relieved you're here. I've heard. Here you go, Chris. Nick. Nice Nicola and her family yeah, are being held hostage by a I've snake that has taken yeah, up okay. residence oh, in their wow. roof. These are uh, my three little ones. And this is a good friend of mine, Louisa. And then this is my mother-in-law, Trish. Wow. She's out from the UK at the moment. So. Um, this happens all the time in Australia, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm pretty sure finding a big snake in your backyard is every parent's nightmare. When you're English, it's even more so. All right, should we have a look at the snake now and check it out? Oh, Lordy. Oh, it's moved. It is awake. How oh, wonderful. The moment I see the snake, I know exactly what I'm dealing with. It's a diamond python. Do they bite or...? Oh, they can if they're, if they're pushed. Provoked, if then it's not, not venomous. I absolutely can't bear snakes. I'm very snake-phobic. I'm really hoping that Dr Chris will be able to bring it down safely and take it away far away from our house. <laughs> the mystery is, is what it's doing here, I guess. It, it could be resting. Yep. Um, it, it could be pregnant. Yep. It did have a very full belly yesterday. Really? Going on that, it may be pregnant okay. and about to lay a whole lot of eggs. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you thought yeah. having a litter of puppies is cute. Wait until you have a litter of snakes. <laughs> Diamond pythons are found in coastal bushland areas. So the real mystery for me right now is what a large diamond python is doing under the eaves of a house in the suburbs of Sydney. It just doesn't make sense. So the plan's going to be to get up there and just have a bit of a look. And then I just need to move the snake in a few different ways until I can get a hold. Right. OK? Right. What I don't know is what sort of state he or she is in and what sort of mood the snake yep. is in. Does the snake have a name? What do you call it? Charlotte. Charlotte the Charlotte. snake. Charlotte, OK. Mm. To catch Charlotte, Chris is going to need some help. Who, who's going to be brave? Come on. <laughs> Good on you. Oh, Trish. Can you just hold on to that for me? Oh, Trish. I, I, might, I might need that at one. I might need that at one stage. <laughs> Despite being absolutely terrified of snakes, Nicola's English mother-in-law, Trish, is determined to make this a holiday to remember. You good there, Trish? Still with me? Don't go running away on me. Snakes just make my blood run cold. They really do. Snakes are not me <laughs> at all. I'm just trying to get a bit of an idea about how big she is and what sort of mood she's in and what she's up to here. Oh, my God. She's quite long. It's big. Normally a diamond python is, say, two metres long. This one is pushing three. Wow, OK, she's very big in the middle of the belly there. Charlotte is turning out to be a bigger challenge than Chris anticipated. The fact is, this snake likes its location. It's chosen it for a reason. So for me to get in there and try to move it away, it's not going to like it. But as soon as Chris attempts to grab Charlotte, the cranky snake is on the run. So she's just trying to edge away there. I certainly wouldn't want to be up there because the snake's looking like a bit cross that uh, Dr Chris is pulling on it. It's going to turn around and have a bite. Not many people are happy about being dragged out of bed and this snake is no different. She's not happy, she's showing it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this girl is bigger than I thought stronger than I thought, and he's holding on tight, fighting against my every movement. But all of a sudden, let's go. Oh my gosh. And comes crashing down and nearly lands on Trish. 
Not scared of snakes, Trish? Okay, now she's annoyed. <laughs> it's all right, guys. After a struggle, Chris manages to get the feisty intruder under control. So before we put her in, <laughs> yeah, what we might do is just check her out. Dr Chris is just having a look to see if she's OK. Feeling down her scales, there's the occasional small lump, which is most likely to be a skin parasite, which is common in wild snakes. But it's the big lump that I'm most interested in. That's most likely a meal that she's had. There's no other way of putting it. Charlotte has a pot belly, and given the location, about halfway down her body, this is her stomach. So sitting in that stomach is a meal she's had recently. I do hope it hasn't got that little dog next door. I would say, looking at the size of that, we're talking about either a bird or even a small possum. So I'd say what's happened is she's had a big meal and she's been trying to digest that. And so rather than just sit idle out in the bush where she's vulnerable, she's actually come and sought some shelter here with you guys. Well, I'm glad we helped. <laughs> Fortunately for Charlotte, it's a clean bill of health. Whilst this has been exciting for the kids, and the adults. Oh, I think everyone would be a lot happier once Charlotte's in the bag. <laughs> well done for fighting your fears. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You've helped me overcome them. You can tell the folks back home all about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be famous for five minutes. Yeah, and I'll probably never <laughs> ever come to Australia hearing no, about this. No. Australian wildlife. Well, I think I've seen enough for now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, Charlotte. Thank you. Bye. We've all overindulged at dinner time, but now it's time for Charlotte to go and sleep it off in a more suitable location. It's time to find you a rock rather than a roof. Let's go. Later that afternoon, Chris has found a new home for Charlotte, the diamond python he captured at Nicola's house. Someone's a bit fidgety. The enormous snake's new address is nearby bushland, not too far away from where she was found. Yeah, this looks good. It's got plenty of trees around, which they like to climb through, but also plenty of rocks to obviously lie on and get some warmth from, but also have a bit of protection from any sort of predators. Oh, you are keen. After that big meal, Charlotte certainly got a taste of the big city, but now it's, it's time for a big sleep. Maybe just small, bite-sized meals now. Seeing how quickly she's managed to get up on the top of that tree it just shows you that getting up into Nick's roof there, it wouldn't have been a stress whatsoever. Somehow I think this tree is where Charlotte's going to stay until she feels a bit lighter. See you guys. Right. But we have a client from Australia who specifically wanted to see you today. <laughs> oh, he's, right. he's waiting in your examination room. Okay, all right. In China, Chris's next patient is an expat Aussie, now living and working in Beijing. How are you going? I'm Chris. Hi, Eddie. Eddie, nice to meet you. Likewise. Who's this? This is BG. She's a bit of a big girl, but we like to remind ourselves she's still our baby. The much-loved Bull Mastiff is having a tough time settling in to her new life in Beijing. Now, you look pretty healthy. <laughs> you taste pretty healthy too. <laughs> what, what's she in for today? Um, well, we're after, actually after some advice. Yeah. Um, a lot of people look at her really strange, thinking that she's a dangerous dog, but you know, it's hard to convince them that she's not. And uh, we take her for a walk, and we, uh, we see people coming in the opposite direction, and they pause and they move around her, they give her a wide berth, which is sad because she is, she's such a happy dog that she all she wants to do is say hello and they don't sense that. Sure. So people find that face menacing. <laughs> Obviously this is hard for Eddie to watch because he's confused as to why no one else seems to understand that this dog is of no threat whatsoever. Quite often her tail will duck under. Mm. Um, you know, because I think she senses the fear and, yeah. and that's just something that sort of spooks her a bit as well. So what I need to work out is is it people causing this problem or is it actually BG? The only way to know for sure is for us all to go for a walk. Come on, 
Where'd you come? The lady doesn't want the dog go anywhere near yeah. her. So, you know, it's not as if she's running loose and um, barking wildly or anything like that. It doesn't take very long to truly understand exactly what Eddie and VG are going through. You know, they've branded all large dogs dangerous and all she wants to do is just say hello. <laughs> People noticeably change their course, they look away, they veer away, they just do not want to be around. What is a very friendly dog? That's a fairly big reaction going inside though. <laughs> it makes me feel more comfortable knowing that it's not just me that, that sees this reaction, that it is, you know, that Chris has seen it for himself, that people will uh, move out of the way. I'm sure the biggest concern for Eddie is the fact that what is just a simple walk could result in him being reported and BG being labelled as being a dangerous dog. Then the authorities, if they get involved, the outcome may not be nice. BG, yeah. One brave local does venture oh, in hello. for a tentative oh. pat. No, look this. But he's still intimidated by BG's size. You eat that, you eat that. Okay. Uh, I actually have an idea. Okay. I think I have something that can change how people perceive her. Okay. I'm, in, I'm intrigued to know it. Yeah? Yep. Can I borrow her for a few minutes? Sure, no problem. Stay here. Yep, I'm not going anywhere. I'll just be a little while. OK. Well, I'm not too sure what's going to happen with Chris's plan. You know, there's a lot of people here to convince, and uh, we can only hope that it works and uh, that the message gets through. I'm not entirely sure this is going to work, but it is worth a shot. Has anyone seen my dog? <laughs> what's going on? So we can't put a little sign around her saying she's friendly, but we can make her look like the most idolised, most loved animal wow. in China. You know some warm in that? The canine panda. Look at you, amazing. And you know what? People are already smiling, people are already intrigued. How did you find a panda so big enough for us? Yeah, it wasn't easy. <laughs> Pandas are really revered in China. They're almost considered to be sacred. So by making BG just look a little bit like a panda, all of a sudden there's a real curiosity, a fascination, and an affection, naturally. That's amazing. They're all coming to us rather than us having to go to them. They're just intrigued by this panda. <laughs> totally out of the blue. I didn't think what Dr. Chris was going to come up with, and I think she looks really comfortable in that outfit too. Look at that. I think she's happy because just you know everybody wants to give her a pat on the head again. And that shows you that all of a sudden she's feeling like she has the love back. Yeah. And that's all we can ask for. Exactly. So <laughs> you don't have to stick with the panda outfit. <laughs> we'll just uh, trial and error and see maybe we'll change it up from a panda to something different the next day. I'm going to leave you with your fans. Thanks. And the newfound popularity. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you. Chris, likewise. Thanks All so best, much. Okay. Thank you so much. Take From care. BG and the family, thank you so much. Bye bye. It's a beautiful shop. See you later. Take care. Bye. Say bye. Bye bye. Over in Perth, Dr. Peter Ritchie has arrived for his shift. When not working as a vet at Perth Zoo, he's on duty here at the animal hospital. Today, aggressive mini fox terrier Lottie needs urgent attention. I can't really get up close and examine Lottie because she's far too ferocious and I really don't want to get bitten. Lottie has a super glue packet stuck to her, but it looks like there's a wound associated with that. Owner Jonathan found little Lottie distressed when he returned home from work, but he was unable to remove the superglue. Uh, I think it might have been on one of the tables and she's quite adventurous finding ways up onto tables. So she'd gotten a hold of a little tube and then ended up gluing some of her fur together and then from her moving about when it's set, it's pulled away out of her skin by the looks of it. Peter can't tackle the glue until Lottie has settled down but he's having no luck getting anywhere near the distraught little dog. It's OK. It's OK. Be calm. So it's time to change tactics. My nurses are absolutely amazing and wonderful with handling animals, and sometimes a male um, 
is not the best person to come in when we have a nervous dog in here as well. So um, some dogs will respond better to a female. Hello, it's okay. So I'm calling in my wonderful nurse, Katrina, to give me a hand. But with every passing minute, the superglue is hardening and the risk of the open wound getting infected increases. I'm a little concerned that she's injured herself and cut her skin there. I can see blood, but the superglue packet itself is actually covering the wound, so I need to investigate a little bit closer there. If it is looking too nice, we may need to take her to a surgery. Come here. Come on, buddy. Good girl, I know you're brave. Come on, let's go. Good girl, come good on. Good girl. Oh, good girl. Come on. Oh, lovely. Leave it to the expert. Yeah. So this is Pete. Be brave. Hey, sweet Pete. We won't hurt you. Are you a bit angry still? Yeah, you are. Oh, it's OK. Should I'm we get so you a muzzle? Pete. Yeah. That looks quite sore. Looks like she's had a good chew at it. It's got all teeth marks in it. Yeah. Before Peter attempts to handle Lottie, he needs to give her some pain relief. Oh, oh no. Here we go. Oh, Done. Oh, no. Before I get to... The super glue, I just want to make sure Lottie's otherwise healthy and well. I'm not going to look at your mucous membranes because I might lose a finger. It's okay. Oh, I know. I know. Lottie, I know, Lottie, you need to calm down. Oh. Calm down. It's okay. He's just listening. I can't hear your heart properly when you're growling, Lottie. Peter is going to use a solvent to try and soften the glue so he can remove the tube and hopefully ease Lottie's discomfort. All right, so this is the product that we use to help break down glue. Um, we normally use it on medical grade glue, I suppose, um, so I'm hoping that it will work on super glue. <laughs> if the solvent doesn't work, Peter will have to take more drastic measures. <laughs> it's quite nasty. It's so matted. The whole hair is glue. For Peter, Lottie's predicament brings back an unexpected childhood memory. I accidentally super glued my mouth shut once. What? I was trying to get the lid off. <laughs> <laughs> I can empathise a lot with Lottie. Um, I've actually been in a similar situation myself where I accidentally ended up super gluing my mouth shut. <laughs> I was very panicked. However, after a few minutes, my saliva ended up eating away at the super glue and I was able to open my mouth and talk again. Oh, no. oh I know. However, using saliva on Lottie is not an option tonight. Now that I've given Lottie some pain relief, I'm going to try clipping some of her fur. Because if we can get past... If we can get underneath that bit of chunk of glue, yeah. <sighs> Lottie's clearly very upset with what I'm doing. Oh, you need to calm down, Lottie. She's feeling pain. Are we able to get a head tapper? Uh, 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 uh. To her head? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe don't pat me. <laughs> I've just tried to clip the super glue away using my clippers and this hasn't really been a good success. Lottie's um, reacting way too much. So good. So good. And is way too stressed as well. <laughs> oh no, oh, I'll leave that. Lottie's obviously in a bit of pain and the super glue's actually come out from the packet and gone all through her coat in this area here. So there's a big mass of hair and glue that I can't get the clippers behind. It's too firmly attached for me to do with her conscious. She's clearly quite distressed, so um, the next step would be to anaesthetise her so she can't feel this and she's a lot more calm. And that way I can be a little bit more aggressive with removing this, um, this tube. But Lottie's a little dog and it holds a high risk. I've got to be very brave for this. It's a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. All right, sweetie. Lottie, you're going to be brave. Good kill. Oh, well done. Well done. She didn't even feel that. No, she didn't react to that. Good kill. The leaking tube of glue is so firmly stuck that Peter has been forced to anaesthetise Lottie. Oh, yeah. He has to work quickly to avoid causing her any more distress. I could recognise a, a whimper, so, yeah, it was a bit difficult to hear. 
Hopefully she pulls through and yeah, there's not any serious injuries. There you go. Well, we give this dragon to her. She gets sleepy. Yeah. Feeling a little bit funny. Now that Lottie's asleep, I'm going to try and use a scalpel blade to trim her hair and remove the super glue. It's a little bit more risky than using the clippers because the scalpel blade's a very sharp instrument and I could easily slip and, and cut her if I'm not careful. I really don't want to have to sew her back together tonight. She's got a big wound on there and hopefully I can just remove this by shaving her hair. But Peter has discovered that the glue is not only stuck to her fur, it's also penetrated her skin. There's a lot of glue uh, over her skin and it's extremely adhered to her. I'm going to try and just shave the hair and remove the super glue completely and hopefully that'll just be a quick and easy fix. It's just the first layer that's come off, it's not actually a defect. Isn't it? Oh, it's sore. It is. I'm going to give her another point 0.1. I think I'm going to have to actually... Surgically remove it. It's really firmly attached to her skin, so I don't see um, many other options apart from she actually removing a bit of skin with the glue as well. We'll keep trying to avoid that, but I'm a little concerned that if I keep going, I'm going to end up causing too much trauma to the skin and, um, and we'll end up having to do that anyway. If I don't have any luck removing this now, my only option is to go to an emergency surgery. I really want to avoid this. Lottie's a little dog and I don't want to have to put her through that. Peter is trying to work as quickly as possible to avoid keeping Lottie under anaesthetic for too long. Just giving another point one. I'm using the scalpel blade and it's not really working. I'm just... yeah. gonna have to figure out another way. I've decided to use a different instrument called a forceps. I'm just trying to gently use it to open. Well, that's working. Yeah. The forceps are doing the trick, but it's a painstaking process. And due to her small size, little Lottie can't stay under anaesthetic for too much longer. Another point one. Yep. She's still reacting. Give her another point one. Yep. Blood pressure's dropping a little bit. It's almost off now, Kat. Just a little bit that's firmly attached right in the middle. Blood pressure's at 71 and her heart rate's 94. Thanks, Mon. Yay, it's off. Oh, God. Fantastic. It's off, it's removed, it's done. Oh, my gosh, look at it. Can we clip it and clean it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. It didn't go initially how I thought it was going to go, but um, we got there in the end. And thankfully, we didn't actually need to give her a full surgery today. Some soothing antibiotic cream will help the wound to heal. And a stocking net will keep it protected. It makes her look like a chicken roll. Come on, buddy. Hello. <laughs> It's amazing, we've managed to get this super glue off and I'm giving Lottie back to John. It was a little bit more difficult than I thought it was gonna be initially. She has got a significant area of trauma to her skin there. So um, ideally we just wanna keep this one over the wound area itself. This stockinette's just there to hold that in place. She'll need a cone of shame. Well. And cone of shame as well. Good girl. We'll definitely make an effort next time to Keep super glue locked away. <laughs> Hopefully she's learned her lesson as well. Hello, mate. Hello, Australian Reptile Park. Oh, hi, my name's Jodie. I'm wondering if you can help me. Um, we've got a funnel web in our house. So I'm home alone with the kids. So I'm not sure if you can come out and... Yeah, 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 I sure will. Look, don't go near it. If you can keep an eye on it from a distance, that'd be good. I'll be there as soon as I can. OK, thanks. Bye. Bye. Hello? Funnel web rescue. Oh, Tim, that was quick. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm Jodie. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. How are you? Good, thank you. Well, not really. We've got a funnel web in the house. Funnel webs kill, and people know that. So it's a little bit terrifying when you've got one in your backyard, let alone in your house. 
Tani, did you see where it went? Um, I think it went under the fridge or behind the CD rack. I don't know how long this spider's been here. Look, I've got goosebumps, it really. It's quite scary, actually. What did it look like? It was big and black. You're pretty brave in here. I can notice you got your I'm, feet up. I'm up now. You're up. <laughs> I'm going to have a look. Ooh, I've got the heebie-jeebies. My husband stomped on one and killed it. And it actually um, didn't bite him at all, but within an hour he was sweating and he was green. And, oh, it just gives me the goosebumps because he was so unwell. Mm. There's one part there I can't see behind. Be careful. <laughs> Is it there? Not yet. We should be able to find him. Any dark corner is where he's going to be because it's daylight now. They're nocturnal, so it's all the dark spots that I look. Watch out, Tim. It doesn't jump out and get you. <laughs> if he's not under the fridge or cupboard, perhaps he's behind the fish tank. As soon as it rains and it's cool, the, the males go out for females. That's the signal. It's cool, get out, and they're not going to dry out. I see him. He's in here. Be careful. I'm always aware of the fact that you can't get complacent. I always like to remind myself, if I was a carpenter, sooner or later I'm going to hit myself on the finger with a hammer. That can't happen with a funnel web spider. You're dead. At the moment, he thinks he's hidden. So he's just sitting there, crouched. But what we'll expect here in a second is, and why they're famous, as soon as I move this, he's going to rear up, put his fangs up, droplets of venom on the end, ready to bite. Come on, mate. Oh, see that? He just bit the tongs. And I can actually feel that fang. Ting! It hits. That's an incredible amount of force for a tiny little spider. If I slip a finger too close for just a split second, bang, he'll bite. Come on, little buddy. In you go. Good spider. There we go. Look at that. That's definitely a Sydney funnel web spider and a male. I can tell that's a male by the size. Female funnel webs, they're bigger, they look scarier, but in fact it's this little male that is the, the dangerous spider, five times more toxic than the female. There he is. Thank you so much. That's OK. We're catching our little friend. Thank gosh that Tim was able to locate the funnel web. I'm really relieved. I was so concerned for the children after what had happened to my husband a few years ago. Finding another one in the house was quite frightening. He's scary. I don't like his fangs. I think they're all going to sleep easy tonight knowing that spider's with me. And we can take him back now and save some lives. That's excellent. This is only the beginning for the spider because now, really, he goes into a luxurious resort. He gets his self-contained little cabin. He gets a cricket once a week. And we get to milk him and extract that venom that saves lives. <laughs> I've learnt that when I come up here, I might as well pack the medical bag because this always seems to turn into some sort of working holiday. In far north Queensland, Chris was meant to be on a break from his vet duties. But he's received a call for help from the most unlikely of places. Ah, Chris, how are you? see you. Hello, and hello to you, yes. Um, now, I've been told you've got a bat that's just been brought in. We have a little insect eating bat, okay. yeah. Jenny now, McLean runs the Tolga bat. bat Hospital an incredible rescue and rehabilitation centre that looks after more than 150 injured and orphaned bats. We're looking after anything from the big flying foxes down to the little micro bats. The flying foxes generally come in because of being caught on barbed wire fences or the wrong type of backyard netting. Up in this part of the world they will also come in because of tick paralysis. These are little fruit and blossom bats. They'd be a month of age. These are hand-raised ones, and they'll go outside in a few weeks and um, progress through until they're released. As amazing as these guys are, this isn't the reason I'm here, is it? No, we've got a little microbat for you to look at. Right. Oh, wow. 
Little Millie here, she um, just came in today. She was found on the floor of a farm shed. Here's a pair of gloves for you. Thank you. She's covered in some sort of globby stuff that we, we're not sure what it is. She's just incredible. Yeah. We're hoping that Chris can get this stuff off to prevent the bat grooming it off itself and then ingesting it. You're tough, aren't you? Hmm? So I guess the worry I've got is that being in a, in a farm shed, there's all sorts of chemicals around, yes, all sorts yes, of oils, yes. and bats and, and oils and chemicals don't, don't really mix, mix, do no, they? No, that's right. As a general rule with animals, usually the smaller they are, the more susceptible to shock they are. And Millie's just about the smallest you'll see. So the first thing I need to do is check Millie over and just see what sort of condition she's in. Just that skin over her shoulder blades there, just looks a little bit Tight. Tight. So see if I pinch that. See that pinch skin staying up there? Yes, yes. Yeah, so she's dehydrated. Mm. Certainly with this heat too, dehydration is mm -hmm. going to be a big, big issue for her. For any animal to be dehydrated is a problem, but when you're dealing with something so small, it can become a massive issue and even potentially fatal. Chris is performing his own delicate procedure, removing sticky oil from tiny microbat Millie. There's a lot coming off that wing. Yeah. The smallest drop of toxin could poison a creature this small. It doesn't take too long before we're starting to see some results. Those cotton buds, they're covered in oil. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. It's okay, it's a, yeah. And that's a lot. It is, off a little wing. Yeah. Chris removes the last of it. If Millie is going to make a full recovery, she needs to eat right now. And thankfully, mealworms look to be one of her favourites. It's one of the most unattractive eating sights I've ever seen in my life. I know you're beautiful in your own way, but <laughs> as half a mealy worm goes into those teeth and face, look at you go. <laughs> the cleanest bat in Jenny's That's clinic really. will spend the next eight weeks recuperating and then hopefully be released back into the wild. Okey doke. Jenny adores each and every bat. She cares for them, she fusses over them, and she knows that out in the wild, they do it tough. There you go, off you go. Thankfully, with Jenny on their side, got a much better chance. Good night, little one. There you go. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.